How's it going, everyone? I'm Aaron Smith. This is Jeffrey Loomis. We are gonna do a little walkthrough for you today, sort of, uh, to show you the song that we put together for the release of the Jeff Loomis Tone Forge. Tone Forge, Jeff Loomis. Yeah, so this is a pretty fun little song. Jeff de decided pretty early on that he wanted to just write some new composition to support the release of this, and I'm always down to help out because we're good buds and live 20 minutes apart, so. Jeff had me over. Uh, you wrote a few riffs in advance. Yes. Pretty much. I had uh, a couple riffs, and then yeah. uh, the rest of it kind of came together when you. When you yeah. So we spent maybe two evenings together structuring the thing, uh, programming some drums. We spent probably twice as much time on it than we planned to, I would say. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, when you're going down that creative rabbit hole, it always you, it's hard to it's hard to stop short of like feeling like you're actually satisfied with your creation. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we tried to create a song that uh, can showcase the various tones that the plugin is capable of creating, you know? It's good rhythm tones, good lead tones. There's a little clean section in the middle that you'll hear. So if you haven't already heard the song, you should listen to it after this. But uh, yeah, so this is not meant to be uh, too much of a tech talk where I'm gonna break down all the mix techniques involved or anything like that. But this is just sort of to step through and just show you roughly kind of a real world way that this plugin can be used. So exactly. Um, I'll play it a little bit just so you can listen and scroll around the session and see this. So hopefully the first thing you're noticing is that the rhythm guitars sound pretty great. Jeff and I have pretty much landed on both thinking that the lead amp is our favorite. It just it cuts a certain way that just seems to respond like really well to your mm -hmm. playing, you know, like sort of the, the aggressive picking. I don't know, just something about the lead channel just cuts in a really nice way, both for rhythms and for leads. For so, this song in particular. Yeah, for this song in particular, you know. Yeah. Um, you'll probably find pairing different cabinets with different amps will, you know, you'll yield, it'll yield different results for you. You'll end up dialing the amps in differently or whatnot. But um, for this song, we ended up using the lead channel for the rhythms and the leads. Yeah, we're just very satisfied with what we were hearing. Mm -hmm. I would say we didn't spend a lot of time actually um, really fighting with the amp sim, you know? We just kind of used the matched cab, which there has since been more cabs added. So again, knock yourself out, just dial, dial stuff in, uh, you know, that best suits your own playing and your own tastes, you know? Cause there's, it's not really a one size fits all way to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so we dialed in something that worked really well during tracking, during the whole creative process. And honestly, by the time I brought this back here to mix, I don't even think I changed the settings at all. They just translated really well. So yeah, the guitars by themselves kind of sound like this. So on that lead there, that is just the amp module. Um, and then all the wetness that you're hearing is coming from the built-in Skybox reverb, which sounds really great. You know, there's a million ways you can skin a cat. So if you wanted to, you could use your own reverb after the fact. Uh, but we're trying to highlight just how powerful and flexible the plugin actually sounds, you know, like listening to this, like it just sits. It's just a great sounding verb. And so like you really don't have to overthink things too much because it's a very powerful tool. Let me solo out this lead for you and you can kind of hear the tone by itself. Sounds real good. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're also gonna be making some presets of some of these tones used in the song. So, uh, you know, hopefully they will they will work for you. You can call them up and use them as a starting point. But again, feel free to tweak beyond that because nothing we're doing here is meant to be taken as gospel. It's just something that worked for our application for the sound of Jeff's right hand. It's gonna be different mm -hmm. different for everybody. So the chorus here we have pretty simple arrangement of just held out power chords. <laughs> So 
So I, I think the arrangement here is pretty brilliant. So again, sim simple power chords, they just sound great ringing out. So we've got a simple pair of kind of this arpeggiated riffing. It's mm -hmm. honestly kind of in some ways similar to the Born type of stuff. Kinda, Not exactly, yeah. but same idea, right? Same arpeggiating idea. the same chords. Yeah. So, so to me, even though there's a lead going on in this section, when I was mixing it, I really felt like this was the highlight of the part. The lead's clearly in there and it sounds great, but like something something about this arpeggiated stuff just kind of grabs my emotions and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So this this is mixed, as you can hear, it's mixed a little bit higher uh, than the other tracks. It just, I want it to be very forward because it just sounds so powerful to me. Sounds great. Kept kept that very dry because we have a wet lead going on in there at the same time. So I'll play you the whole section here if you want to check it all out. Me leaving that arpeggiated bit dry felt like the right move because then we can have all the uh, all the wetness of the reverb on that sort of solo in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. It's fun having a busy solo, some busy arpeggiation, and some power chords all working together. You know, and I think and that's that are just... all easily listenable and here you can hear. Everything, yeah, and the so reason the reason it works is just because it's, it's intelligently written. You know, arrangement is everything in a song like Should this. Should we play so. them some uh, cleans? Yeah. So that takes us into the clean section here. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll maybe I'll play through it and then I'll break it down a little bit. <laughs> So let's see here. On this section, there's kind of a low gain type of lead sound we dialed in here. Uh, looks like we did this on the rhythm amp. I was hitting it with a little bit of uh, compression ahead of time, just so that on these kind of soft tails that he plays, that they don't sort of die out too quickly. So it's, no, nothing, nothing too crazy going on. But some, sometimes hitting it before the amp could be a good thing. I am a big fan of the reverb again. Same reverb that we're using on the leads, right? All, all built into the plug here. It just sounds, it just sounds great. Each, each of these um, algorithms, I guess, is the right word. Uh, they all sound great, just they're sort of different lengths, different tonalities and stuff, so depending on what you're trying to do, you'll find something you like, but this blood setting to me, it kind of just, it's like the most expansive and spacey, and on this song, it just sort of, it just works. It just sounds really good, so that's the one I was leaning on a lot for this. This next section's pretty fun, gets epic here. Let's see what it sounds like. the way that note just screams at the end there, you mm -hmm. know? I think we just hit some kind of gnarly chord and just let it just trail off into the reverb. It just, it's perfect. So uh, this is a section where, kind of for funsies, I opted to keep the plug-in dry. So we're getting just the tone out of here, but bypassing the internal reverb. And uh, I sent it through this micro shift plugin, which does a pretty good emulation of like an old uh, Rockman chorus type mm -hmm. of vibe, which Jeff introduced me to that actually. So it's kind of like the quintessential 80s, Yep. super wide type of tone, you know? We're, we're not using the kind of the the solid state preamp section of it, which is a big part of the tone, but this micro shift, again, it does a really cool wide thing that just takes the guitar, pop, makes it pop out of the speakers a little bit. It's very chorusy sounding. So I used that thing on that part and then fed it into Black Hole, which is a great sounding reverb too. Um, <laughs> let me solo out the clean here for you on this part because then you can hear how good it sounds. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah.
if I recall correctly, I believe we plugged in a Strat for that because yes, Strat that does Strat, Strat yep. just does some really classic. With the really glassy tones. Yeah, that we're exactly, for exactly. That. There's yeah. just something a Strat can do clean wise mm -hmm. that's just very immediately recognizable and stands out. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you have multiple guitars, use you know. Anyway, I don't know. Where well, I'm going the plugin with that, translates from to single coils sure. to active humbuckers beautifully. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Jeff and I had no trouble, you know, changing guitar styles and finding something that works inside the plugin. It just it sounds it sounds great. So uh, to build this section up a bit, we uh, just went a little heavier on the pads, you know. So there's a pad that kind of goes through, and then. There's this Tron track I made. Uh, I think you and I actually kind of worked this out together, figured mm -hmm. out the notes. If I remember right, by the end, the filter kind of drops the low end out and it gets a little bit mm -hmm. crunchy. It's basically following the, the chords in the back. Yeah, so that, that kind of gets crunchy at the end as it crescendos. Uh, we spent a while with these choir bits. Let me just play you the synth, the synth layers all together so you can kind of hear what that sounds like but on its own. Okay, another part of the song that I'm very fond of is this sort of arpeggiated. I, you, it's not a solo. There's not even really any true rhythm guitars in this. It's just more of a thematic kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. This, this arpeggiated lick. Yeah. Uh, Jeff pretty much just pulled this out of his brain somehow pretty quickly. Uh, I don't know how you <laughs> sometimes write the things you write, but it sounds amazing. So let me play this section and then I'll solo it out for you. Pretty simple arrangement going on there. Obviously the star of the show is going to be these double tracked guys here. So there is a mono rhythm guitar here in the middle, just simple, simple octaves. Uh, and I believe it's got a stereo verb on it too, just to fill it out and make it, make it very distant. That thing by itself just sounds really moody and cool. So, mm -hmm. you know, you combine it with the arpeggiated stuff. There's also one other little secret track in here. Uh, we, I believe I had you play in an octave up at the same time. Yes. Uh, the arpeggiated bit, and that's just a single track snuck in the middle here. So that's just in there a little bit, kind of just a supporting role to the main one. Just adds a little richness. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just always a fan of octaves. Normally, normally yeah. you can octave almost it anything, and it just it just does good things for the emotions. Yeah. Um, there's this fun pad track in here. I called it Bulbous Pad. It must sound bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, just following the chords yeah. of the arpeggios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some fun voicings in there, spiffing that guy up. And I think that leads uh, us to the yeah, end, right? Yeah, and then we got yeah. the sending section here. So this is just kind of a fun riff based on the same chords. Yep.
felt real good to end the song on a super heavy note, you know. Starts out real heavy and thrashy, gets softer, gets real soft in the middle, builds back up. Like, I, I think the song takes me on a really nice journey start to finish, right? Absolutely, and yeah. It took, it took yeah. us a while to kind of carve it out and get there, you know, but... Um, I think it was almost really kind of written solely for the plugin to kind of showcase all the beauty of it. You know? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm proud of it. I think it's a fun thing that we that we worked out. Yeah, um, very much. I cannot praise the Tone Forge plugin enough that we used. Like I said earlier, it was very easy to get a tone that worked and we weren't fighting it, you know? Sometimes you dial in a sim, you dial in a tone and just you kind of keep tweaking it as you go and then you start playing a different section where your playing style changes a little bit and it just isn't working for you. So mm -hmm. the fact that this plugin had that factor, right? It like, it, no matter if you were playing something on the lower notes or playing something up on the higher notes, it just cuts and it just has that tone that, that we were after. And yep. so really, it was really simple. Like it, fighting the sim was not a part of the process of creating the song, either writing it, tracking it, or mixing it. Like it was, it was a very, uh, very easy and pleasant thing to work with. So I'm very happy to be helping to promote this plugin. So if you guys like the tones that you heard in this song, they're included as presets in the plugin. So click the link down in the description and uh, get cracking and make some cool music. <laughs>